Our exhortation this morning comes from Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 through 16. Do all things without grumbling or disputing, that you may be blameless and innocent children of God, without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. So today's exhortation is about grumbling or complaining. The books of Exodus and Numbers are really the best case studies to learn about this pernicious sin of grumbling and God's hatred for it. God had miraculously delivered the Israelites from cruel captivity with Egyptian treasure in their pockets. He supernaturally delivered food for them daily and was bringing them to a land flowing with milk and honey. And yet there was a problem is their grumbling and unbelieving hearts. We see this over and over throughout this story. For example, in Numbers 11, we read, And the people complained in the hearing of the Lord about their misfortunes. And when the Lord heard it, his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some outlying parts of the camp. Their complaining kindled God's anger, and his fire consumed some of the camp. Then just a few pages later, when the spies returned from Canaan, from scouting out Canaan, we read, Then all the congregation raised a loud cry, and the people wept that night. And all the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron. Here is God's response a few verses later. And the Lord said to Moses, How long will this people despise me? And how long will they not believe in me? In spite of all the signs that I have done among them, I will strike them with the pestilence and disinherit them, and I will make of you a nation greater and mightier than they. We read also in Psalm 95 about how God felt about these grumblers. It says, For forty years I loathed that generation and said, They are a people that go astray in their heart, and they have, no, they have not known my ways. Therefore I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. So do you pray that God will reform and revive our nation? Do you want God's deliverance from the enemies of the church, the wicked rulers and the scoffers that we see all around us? He's promised deliverance. Will you receive it with faithful obedience and gratitude, or will your grumbling tempt God to put off his deliverance for another generation? This is a big deal. And we see with the Israelites in the wilderness the grumbling and complaining of God's people has caused, caused him to withhold his blessing and even kindled his righteous wrath and judgment in the past. So, brothers and sisters, this morning I want to exhort you to do all things without grumbling or complaining. Cheerful gratitude is such, is such a rarity in the world today that Scripture says that we will shine as lights in the world in the midst of a crooked and, uh, a crooked and twisted generation if we do all things without grumbling or complaining. So let's look at a few practical examples in our households. A rule that we should all have in our homes, and we should drill this into our kids' hearts, is to do all things without complaining. We tell our kids to obey right away and all the way uh, with a cheerful attitude every day. We're training them to not be grumblers. The first response we want for TRC children to have when given a command by their parents is yes ma'am and yes sir, not do I have to or I don't want to, right? If it isn't, another, another point is if it isn't cheerful obedience, it isn't obedience. If mom asks you to clean your room and you storm off to clean it, you haven't obeyed. Obedience with back chat or grumbling or complaining is disobedience. Teenagers, a particular kind of grumbling that you're gonna have trouble with is back chatting. And this is in part because you're no longer a child. You've gained a lot of knowledge from your, your studies and you've actually become pretty good at making an argument and defending your argument. And that's a good thing. We want you to, to have those rhetorical powers um, and we want you to continue to grow in your knowledge and, and your ability to persuade. But you must also recognize that you are a sinner and you're going to use, your sinful heart is going to justify its sin by uh, using arguments. And so when your parent asks you to do something, say some chore that you just don't want to do because you just found a comfy spot to read, the temptation is going to be to make some argument 
do I have to do that right now? I mean, I've, you know, I've already done it, or you know, some, some sort of argument justifying what's really going on in your heart, which is just laziness, right? And so this is a great opportunity to practice immediate obedience. Let yes ma'am or yes sir be the first thing that comes out of your mouth. And a great way to do that is to obey with your body, right? We talked about obedience about our, our bodies earlier. Obey with your body as well. Immediately jump up out of your chair and start moving towards the, ch the chair, the chore rather. Our bodies many times can obey a lot faster than our hearts and our minds. And so when you jump to it with your body, it becomes easier for your heart to actually follow. And you'll find that just like anything, cheerful obedience is a skill. It's, it's something that, that you train through habits and repetition. So adults, I'm sorry, you're not off the hook here. Um, we can actually be some of the worst offenders. Our grumbling has become so commonplace today that it's not even really viewed as negative anymore. People make t-shirts and coffee mugs that complain about raising kids, about living with the spouse. And we've all seen the memes of waiting until the kids, you know, counting down until the kids go to bed so we can pour that large glass of wine or whatever it is, right? And obviously a lot of this stuff can just be fun and, and innocent, but of course there's, there's truth in it. And we wanna make sure that that doesn't take root in our hearts. We don't want to adopt an ungrateful or unthankful attitude towards the gifts and the responsibilities that God's given us. So I want to encourage you parents to put away all grumbling and complaining. Finally, one last point I want to make is, is that it's really common in churches to have congregations that grumble um, against their, their pastor or their elders. And, you know, it's complaints about the music or the liturgy or the chairs or whatever it is, right? And I can say that, uh, I can say, happily that that's not a sin that, that we've experienced uh, here in the church as of yet. But I do want to encourage you that one way we can guard against this in the future as we continue to grow, because there will be more and more opportunities for tension and complaining as we grow, one of the things I want to encourage you to think about is if you've identified some sort of area that you think is a problem in the church, it's very possible that God has gifted you in a unique way to address that problem. So if you see something that isn't right or that you wish was different, pray that God would lead you to a solution and pray that, and then bring it humbly to the leadership and ask if you can help implement the, the solution that you've, you've come up with. Um, and in all of this, do it with humility and with patience, trusting that, you know, knowing that that uh, there's a lot going on, and there's, there's a lot of things that we can't, just, we can't tackle immediately. So here at TRC, we're praying that God's kingdom will come here on, on earth as it is in heaven in Huntsville. And this work will no, will no doubt be messy, and it will be difficult, um, but we do want to shine as a light in the midst of a crooked and a twisted generation. So we must be committed to doing all things without grumbling.